Level up your understanding of human nature with these five books, ordered from thin to thick, so that regardless of how your schedule look, you will be able to fit one of these into your reading schedule. Let's go! First out, we have James Bond Stockdale's Courage Under Fire. To live one's philosophy ought to be the goal of any philosophically minded person. It was at the end of a philosophy course when his teacher gave him a book called The Enchiridion by the ancient Stoic philosopher Epictetus. Uh, the Enchiridion is a manual to life, so to speak, and that's what uh, James von Stockdale used it for. He devoured it, he studied it for years. And it came handy when, a couple of years down the line, he got captured by the enemy in the Vietnam War. In prison, Stockdale took charge. He and the other POW, they developed a new attitude towards their, life, their new life situation based on the teaching of Epictetus. And this helped them uh, maintain morale and live through years of torture and isolation. Uh, this is a very, very thin book. It's, I think it's 21 pages and it's an exciting experiment with using philosophy practically in real life. And secondly, we have Eric Bernays' book, Games People Play, The Psychology of Human Relationships. This is a perennial seller. It's sold for millions of copies. And in this book, Eric Bernay presents the most common psychological games that are played in marriage, in social situations, and in underground activities. It's a book that can be quite um, scary to read through because you probably found, find out that you yourself are playing some games or the people around you. And that's an insight that can be quite uncomfortable. I really recommend this book. And as number three, we have The True Believer by Eric Hoffer, Thoughts on the Nature of Mass Movements. In this book, philosopher Eric Hoffer takes a deep dive into the psychology behind mass movements. What makes a nation, a community, a society, a class ripe for a mass movement? What are the psychological needs, conscious or unconscious, that the mass movement fills? Who are the key players in such a movement? What are the phases it goes through? This book covers it all and it shines a light on a side of human nature that we might not like to admit exists. Despite its moderate size, this was one of those books that I took so much notes from. And when I finished it, I started over right away. Uh, it's a true, true gem that more people should read and a book I don't hear many people talk about. Next up. Slightly Thicker, The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt. The Righteous Mind, it ticks all the boxes that I think makes a great book. It provides new mental models, it challenges my pre-existing beliefs, and as I turn the last page on this book, I have gotten a new lens through which to see the world. In The Righteous Mind, Jonathan Haidt proposes that we are not as rational as we think we are. He makes a case that we actually use moral reasoning more as a tool to con convince others and ourselves that we are right rather than as a tool to look for truth. This book will challenge fundamental beliefs you have about morals, religion and politics and it might be uncomfortable but if you take this on it's a very very rewarding experience. And last but not least we get to the heavyweight class here we have the Gulag Archipelago weighing in at 560 pages and this is the abridged version, mind you. Not only is it a heavy book, but it's a heavy topic. It's a literary investigation into the Gulag prison systems and this book kindled an interest in me in totalitarianism, mass movements and freedom, or rather our attempt to escape from it. In this book, we get Scholzenitzen's account from the everything from the initial arrests, the interrogations, the torture, the tra transports from prison to camp. We get to know the main players within the Gulag prison systems, the interrogators, the guards. We it's it's a heavy read. 
but it gives us some great insight to one of the darkest chapters of the 20th century. That concludes the list for today. I you probably have more suggestions, then let me know in the comments because I would love to have a conversation and get some more inspiration about books to read. And while you're down there, smash the like button, subscribe. It really helps me reach more people with great books. And I think that's a good thing. People should read more books. I'm back next Thursday with more book reviews and book recommendations. And until then, Bjorn out.